How are you supposed to assign the computer? So in your first exam, if Chem 1B is scheduled for next Thursday, so this exam will be open book and open notes. Also bring a calculator. What I encourage you to do is to go to the Chem 1B website and take a look at some of those old exams from previous semesters. And that will give you an idea of the types of questions which can be asked on exams. And the quizzes that we've been taking, those are examples of, of questions from previous exams. Too. So these quizzes, and you'll take a quiz at the end of class today, are designed to help you prepare for exams. Now, although the exam was open book and open notes, do not fall into the trap like I did of not studying as hard as you normally do for an exam. Because you don't want to spend time looking through your textbook for the answer to a question which you may or may not find anyway. Okay. So what you may want to do is to have on one piece of paper the relevant equations which you want to use to answer your questions and practice. Okay, so the one difficulty that students have in science exams involving the calculations is trying to figure out what equation to use. So by practicing then, uh, questions from previous exams, this will help you figure out what concept is involved in that question and what equation to use. Okay, so often there's key words which will help you figure out what concept and what equation to use. Okay, so let's continue on to what we were talking about on Tuesday in class. So we figured out that the uncoiling of DNA is it faster or slower at body temperature compared to 60 degrees. And we figured out that the half-life at 37 degrees, what was it again? It was like some number of days, like 180 days or 200 days, 140 days. So note that in this case, Temperature makes a big difference in figuring in the half-life of the reaction. So let's go into part C. What is the chemical force that holds the DNA in its coiled state? So I know that DNA consists of two strands. Each strand is held together by those base pairs. And we've talked about the chemical force which holds together those base pairs. What is that chemical force? Yeah, hydrogen bonds. So DNA not only has that double helix shape, but it's coiled because it's got to fit in those little cells. So what chemical force holds DNA together in that coiled state? Okay, so if we were to look at chemical forces, Let's just list the chemical forces and then we can figure out which chemical force helps us answer that question. So, name one chemical force. Pardon me? Lemon? Okay, so lemon force. What else? Okay, dipole, dipole. Dipole, dipole forces. Then you said hydrogen bonds. There's a few other forces. Metallic. Yeah, metallic bonds. Covalent bonds. Metallic bonds. Covalent bonds. Ionic bonds. And ionic bonds.
Now often these two forces are called the Van der Waals forces. Okay, so just in case you see that. Van der Waals forces. So what I'm hoping is that by the time I retire, I hope pretty soon, well, I <laughs> that I'll get to brag about your name in a general chemistry textbook. Okay, so what chemical force holds together that DNA in this coiled state? Is it London forces? What a dipole dipole. <coughs> what a hydrogen bonds. What a metallic bonds. How a covalent bonds. Are covalent bonds involved in in DNA? And where do we find the covalent bonds in DNA? Yeah, so we talked about we talked about biomolecules earlier, so DNA is a type of nucleic acid. And Nucleic acids consist of three components. What are those three components? Sugar. Yeah, there's a sugar. Phosphate. Yeah, there's a phosphate. And there's one more thing. Nitrogenous base. Yeah, the nitrogenous base. So it's the these nitrogenous bases that base pair between the two different strands of DNA to give DNA its double helix shape. So. Where is the covalent bonds in DNA? So for the sugar molecule, or for the sugar part, yeah, it's usually like some, uh, isn't it like a, a five-sided ring? Like that? So what holds the atoms in the ring together? The covalent bonds. And then for the phosphate, you know, phosphate, PO4 with a minus P charge. Okay, so. And I try this base, depends on the type of base. There's, there's four of them in four types in DNA. Okay, so those are held together by covalent bonds. So, uh, what holds together the DNA in its coiled state? Hydrogen bonds. Okay, so it's going to be hydrogen bonds. Is the uncoiling of DNA favored by entropy or enthalpy or both? Okay, so if we have the DNA in its coiled states, okay, so it's all coiled, whatever it looks like in the cell, and then it's, it's uncoiled, so I'll show the uncoil like that. Now when we look at entropy, entropy has to do with the amount of order or disorder. So which state, the coiled state or uncoiled state is more ordered. Well, the other way to ask that question is which state is more disordered? <laughs> so you can think of it like your room. So you might put in a lot of energy or work to clean up your room, but over time, your room, does it get cleaner over time? Without you doing anything? I wish. Or, yeah, I wish it does, but it doesn't happen. It goes from order to disorder state. So which one is the ordered state? The coiled or the uncoiled? Coiled. Yeah, so this is the more ordered state. And this is, has a lot of disorder. So this is the natural state of things going from order to disorder. So this is the, this would be favored by entropy if it's going from an ordered state to a disordered state. For enthalpy, enthalpy has to do with delta H, okay, the change in enthalpy. And we talked about bonds breaking and bonds forming. 
So when a bond breaks, is delta H going to be greater than zero or less than zero? Greater than zero. Yeah, so when bonds break, delta H is greater than zero. When bonds form, delta H is yeah, less than zero. And then later on this semester, we're going to look at this equation. You may have seen this equation before. It's this equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So delta H is the enthalpy part. Delta S is the entropy part. Delta G is the free energy part. So if the free energy or the change in free energy is less than zero, that helps that reaction occur spontaneously. If delta G is greater than zero, it's the reverse. The reaction won't occur. So note that in the uncoiling of DNA, that's favored by entropy. Is the uncoiling of DNA favored by enthalpy? Okay, so you said that this coiled DNA is held together by what chemical force? Okay, so if these are held together by hydrogen bonds, and they're going from the coiled to uncoiled state, are bonds breaking or are bonds forming? Yeah, so those hydrogen bonds are breaking. So if hydrogen bonds are breaking, is delta H going to be greater than zero or less than zero? It's going to be greater than zero. So note that in this case here, the uncoiling of DNA is not favored by enthalpy, but it is favored by entropy. Okay, so let's see. Is the uncoiling of DNA spontaneous at 37 degrees? So we know it has a long half-life, but what does half-life have to do with whether a reaction occurs or does not occur? <laughs> now, so remember at the beginning of uh, our discussion of reaction rates, we said that energy is involved in every chemical reaction, but we can we can split it up into two two different types of thinking. So one way is does a reaction occur? The other way is how fast does a reaction occur? So note that.